Hey there YouTube, I'm Yukitsu, this is the Yukitsu Times, welcome to my channel, welcome to a bit of Amnesia, a machine for pigs in retrospective. It's a little bit late in the coming, but I've had a fairly busy time, so I haven't really had the time to go ahead and do it. But uh, yeah, this is a game that I did enjoy, so I figured I'd best review it in the same sort of style that I always have. Now it's important again to remember I don't do objective analysis or review. I don't think that there is any such thing as a truly objective review and I don't think there's actually a point in trying to do an objective review. Games and what makes them fun is subjective. Games and what makes them scary is subjective. So if you happen to have the same preferences as me, um, all the more power to you. You're gonna like the same sort of games that I do. And if you don't have the same preferences as me, this is going to be a sort of warning that you're probably not going to like it because it's the sort of game that I like for the reasons that I tend to like games. Or maybe I'll reveal something that you do like in it when I'm talking about it because I can talk about things that the game has uh, in terms of what it is as opposed to whether it's good or bad. But uh, let's start off with some of the most important elements in a horror game. And the, let's talk about the environment and the sort of um, aesthetics of the game and the uh, appearance and the atmosphere of it. So. Amnesia in both games is very much driven by the oppressive atmosphere. Um, they're very much both kind of uh, these sort of claustrophobic feeling places. They're both these places that feel as though you're uh, confined, you're trapped, and uh, that you can't escape from where you are. That's a little bit less so in this game. It's a little bit less claustrophobic because uh, your, your character has a motivation for continuing on. He's not locked in his house to the point where he couldn't just up and leave if he wanted to. Um, Daniel, on the other hand, is completely trapped and being pursued by a monster. Uh, so already there's some slight tonal differences, but for the most part it maintains that sort of aesthetic uh, quality and same sort of um, general overarching uh, tension as the original Amnesia. So the atmosphere is really good in this game. It's gloomy, it's dark, it's oppressive. Uh, you feel like you're being trapped in this, uh, in this insatiable machine that feels alive uh, at times and it's it's all quite good it's quite well done one of the things in particular that I like best about this game as opposed to the other amnesia game is that god damn it uh, where was I right the atmosphere of this game is really assisted by the fact that it's not in a single environment castle like Castle Brennenberg was um, the fact that it's in this sort of industrial complex attached to this mansion and the fact that you can even go outside a little bit it makes it so that there is a tremendous variety in the environments and the way that those environments can be presented that I think other horror games tend to lack. A lot of horror games tend to pick a single environment and sort of stick with it these days. I find like uh, e even Outlast I find all of it sort of looks like that same kind of medical compound plus the sewers because for some reason every game needs a sewers level including this one and including like every other horror game in existence. Not really that important, but anyway, what I like about that is that each of those sort of areas can be scary in a slightly more distinct way as opposed to that sort of monotony of going through the same thing over and over again. Amnesia Dark Descent managed to get through that by filling that one room with red, for instance, um, but that was sort of more uh, overt and it sort of was something that you got used to very, very quickly, uh, that area near the end. Everything else was very sort of similar environmentally. And I don't think that that works out all that well for horror games by comparison to what they're doing here. Um, on the other hand, it's not a huge deal that that's sort of what they've done. Um, I think that uh, you know having the variety of environments is good, but it's not really necessary. I just happen to think that's a plus point for Amnesia Machine for Pigs. Uh, so moving on from the environments, um, let's talk a little bit about characters. Now. They've spent a lot more time focusing on the characters of A Machine for Pigs by contrast to the characters of uh, A Dark Descent. And I, I keep comparing it to A Dark Descent and I can compare it as well to Outlast uh, because those are sort of the big name games, horror games that people are talking about these days and sort of comparing one another to each other. And I think that's sort of fair because they all sort of fill slightly different niches. Well, um, A Dark Descent and A Machine for Pigs I think are very, very similar, but um, pretty much this game out of those three focuses the most on developing a character. Mandis is again sort of a real character and I, I get the feeling like he's sort of a, an 
entity that I really empathize with and feel sorry for and can get in the shoes of at certain points and then sort of think, oh, would I do that if I if I had been in this situation? Because uh, Mandis has real motivations and it's the motivations of the character that keep him moving forward and to a certain degree keeps the player moving forward. So you want to help your children. I mean, how could anyone really fault somebody for sticking around in a haunted mansion for trying to want to save his children? Um, whereas with, like, Daniel, it's like, I wonder why he didn't just, like, take all that stuff and, like, form a rope ladder and climb out the frickin' window. Uh, apparently things in the woods would have killed him anyway, but it's not like he wouldn't have known that he had amnesia. And, uh, similar thing for, like, that guy in Outlast. It's like, oh, this guy, like, impaled on a freaking spike. I should probably investigate. I think he's pretty obviously in over his head there. This guy, I feel, has sort of a realistic motivation. And I think that goes back to the earlier days of uh, Silent Hill, where it wasn't just, oh yeah, you're you're trapped here now, you can't get out, there's no way out. Uh, like, uh, the early days of Silent Hill was characters had a motivation to be in Silent Hill, and it was usually some sort of psychosis driving them forward almost, some sort of obsession with something that uh, had to do with their past guilt. I happen to think that that sort of style of motivation and mo uh, reason for keeping a character involved in the story is much more natural and much less uh, artificial than ones where the person simply cannot leave, physically cannot leave the place. Of course, like uh, that's just the story justification. Mandis at this in this game never really gives you the option to leave the mansion um, or just forget about all of it. Or I, I guess even then you could because nothing strictly speaking bad is going on up until you start activating parts of the machine. So if you never did that, you know, you could just continue on living your peaceful life in your mansion with your dead kids. Um, I, I think maybe that would have been okay. But even then, uh, you know, it's that sort of story continuity that sort of makes it make more sense. Because it doesn't make sense that that reporter in Outlast would uh, stick around in that stupid building because, frankly, there's no way that he should be sticking around in that stupid building and he kind of gets his comeuppance for it. But uh, that aside, I, I think that as well, the way that they've portrayed his children as being sort of those creepy uh, children as well as the fact that they've sort of got their own sort of little story, the machine itself has that sort of uh, personality and they give you a lot more personality from all these little notes that I'm picking up here. And I think that all of that combined makes it for a fairly in-depth um, horror game when it comes to characterization. And I think that that plays an important part in this particular story and in this particular game. Um, in a lot of horror games, they rely sort of more on the atmosphere and what's happening to you to scare you. And the immersion comes from the fact that the character is in third person, which or sorry, first person typically, uh, third person and very few others. But uh, first person tends to make you feel more immersed in what's going on. Uh, it makes you feel like things that are happening are directly happening to you. So they rely on the fact that they're assuming that when you're playing a first-person game like this, that you'll be immersed and that uh, a Tabula Rosa character who has no traits or personality whatsoever is something that you'll be able to inject your own personality into and relate to. Um, for some people like me, I don't inject my own personality into a Tabula Rosa character. I just assume that I'm playing as someone who's completely daft and boring. Um, when I play a character, I look for things that they do that I can relate to because I relate to uh, actual having of attributes, not having no attributes. And um, for me, Mandis is a character that I have um, a bit of respect for because I, I kind of feel like I can empathize with the way he thinks a lot. And that makes it so that I feel more immersed in the character of Mandis than I did in uh, certain other horror game characters. For example, uh, Daniel, he works the same way. He tries to make you immersed in the idea of being Daniel, of like relating to Daniel and realizing what sort of horrible things that somebody who has those sort of beliefs could do. But uh, Daniel's primary defining characteristic is that he's a coward. Uh, all he wants to do is live. Mandis wants something a little bit more noble and something that you want to relate to. It's that idea that you want to be someone who saves your children. And uh, I, I think that that makes it such a powerful driving force because, I mean, ah, son of a bitch. I swear to God, this happens every time I sit down to try to do this video, by God. 
But you know what? We're doing it live. We're doing it. I don't even care anymore. Anyway, um, talking about the characters again. Uh, uh, I think character is an important element in certain types of horror, depending on what you like and what scares you. If you're not really into that kind of psychologically immersive horror, that idea that, you know, uh, the problem might be in your head as opposed to the problem is in the world, and if that's what scares you, then uh, Amnesia Machine for Pigs is sort of that psychological sort. If you're into the idea that, you know, things chasing you is scary, if physical threats to your body and to your health and your life are the scary thing, then Amnesia uh, Machine for Pigs is not necessarily going to be for you. It's more one of those sorts of games where you sort of contemplate on it and you think that, uh, you know, the things that you might do in that sort of situation, and, uh, you know, this whole thing about staring at monsters and all that uh, thing with, uh, or I forget, uh, staring to the void, I think, actually. But uh, those sort of elements combine, I think, really well uh, for certain types of horror, and that relies heavily on characters. So that's my opinion on that, and screw the telephone. Anyway, uh, moving on, let's talk a little bit about the sound. The sound in this game is a, a little bit like it is in many horror games. There's very little music. It's very, very ambient. And uh, where it is there, it's noticeable and it's conspicuous and it's supposed to be a little bit disturbing. It's not supposed to necessarily be nice in and of itself, which is sort of typical for horror. So it's a little bit harder to talk about music in horror games uh, than it is other genres. Um, one of the things that I do like is that there are less scare chords in this game than there were in Amnesia Dark Descent. Um, I think that those make it seem like... Uh, they add to the shock and surprise value, but they make you think that, well, it's, well, you feel inherently in your mind that, you know, somewhere in your mind you think immediately, this is just a game when you hear those sorts of things. You don't think, oh, scare chord, that's really, uh, that's really terrifying. I'm, I'm scared out of my wits here. Uh, that's not really, I don't think, what you're thinking at that time. And I think that uh, their removal of those sort of helps the game out quite a bit. Um, the actual music soundtrack, if you listen to it, most of it sounds like industrial machines and sort of like demonically possessed industrial machines. Um, and, and that fits the game very well because when you're listening to it, you're down amongst the machines. So it sounds very ambient. It sounds like it's part of the natural environment, but it sounds very warped and it sounds very unnatural. And uh, I think that that is sort of the effect that they want to go for here. And it works quite well with the soundtrack and with the gameplay. But uh, from a music standpoint, I have to say that like listening to it is really, really not... It's not good to listen to it's at all. Um, that's sort of the way it is. But if you happen to want to listen to something that's very discordant and very much um, a disturbing sort of music in um, a horror game... Uh, the old Silent Hill soundtracks, I actually think, are very uh, atmospheric and discordant as well. Uh, but they are also soundtracks that I happen to like listening to in their own right. So I think that that's sort of um, something you want to consider, is that they could have done a better job with the music, I think. And uh, they could have made it accomplish the same thing, but still have been a good soundtrack. But I, on the other hand, I'm not sure if they're supposed to care. It's not like uh, they... This is a game where the music is supposed to be a big important part of it, so it's hard to say. Now, moving on from sound, um, let's talk a little bit about gameplay. And this is the big sticking point that a lot of people who've been critical of it have been talking about. I've been saying that there's just not enough gameplay elements to it. Uh, it's too much just walking. Um, here's my opinion on horror games as a genre. If it's not an action survival horror game, Gameplay elements are always going to be minimal and almost non-existent. So, for example, if you were to play the Clock Tower, the gameplay elements in that game are fairly minimal. It's only a few puzzles where you pick up things and uh, then you drop them off in the correct puzzle slot. There is no actual, like, there, there's very little actual gameplay to a game like that. And... When you're comparing it to a game like Outlast or um, like Resident Evil, and yeah, I do classify Outlast as a an action-y survival horror game, 
Uh, in those particular games, the element of uh, the scares is intermixed in with action. Um, but th those are not necessarily pure horror games. There's nothing wrong with that, but you need to distinguish between the genres. A pure horror game um, isn't really going to be necessarily about that sort of survival element. And um, even Silent Hill, to a certain degree, um, with its necessary combat, can at times be considered more of an action survival horror game. I wouldn't go so far as to say it actually is an action survival horror game, but it's just the fact that they do, in fact, rely quite heavily on combat um, compared to certain other horror games. Now, for the most part, though, this means that like uh, a game like... Uh, like Amnesia, neither of which had tremendous amounts of actual gameplay, neither of those games really bother me in the fact that they have minimal gameplay elements and require more walking around than anything else. The big reason for that being, of course, that I don't think that those elements add much to the gameplay. The fact that, for example, if you throw in a couple puzzles to a horror game, it doesn't really add a whole lot to the experience. If you make it so that you have to hold down the shift key and the W key because there's a chase scene, that doesn't add a whole lot to the experience to me. Those sort of things don't add tension to me. And the really egregious cases make it feel as though the game is sort of um, a game. It doesn't make it feel as though it's an immersive experience again. And uh, for me, that sort of immersion in horror games is sort of almost all important. Um, it's that sort of big thing that you need to focus on in horror games. And uh, th this game, I think, does a very good job of doing that. I think that adding in really ludicrous puzzles um, would really ruin that effect. And so I think that what they've done is actually quite effective for what they want to be doing in this particular game. Now, I, uh, let me just sort of talk about why puzzles are in horror games. A lot of puzzles are in horror games as the gameplay element because they want you to look at certain things at certain times. And by forcing you to either look at the puzzle or look for the puzzle pieces at a specific time, they're forcing your attention in certain places so that they can guarantee that you'll see something. Um, in case you didn't notice, Amnesia Machine for Pigs still does this quite often. You'll notice that there, when there are corridors that you need to traverse, you will see something like um, your boys, for instance, or you'll see the pig. Uh, those are things that you're almost guaranteed to see, but you don't have to see it, which I think uh, it, it ultimately ends up being just as effective as it would have been if they included puzzles at doing that. And um, as well, they include all those little notes for you to collect and find, which does the same sort of function, but they're optional. Uh, so they don't rely too heavily on drawing or forcing your attention. Um, now, in terms of the gameplay itself, most puzzles are really bad in horror games. Most of them require the same sort of hideous logic that you get in adventure games, and I don't particularly like those things in my games. I think uh, most games do better off without having those elements. Now, getting past that... Um, I think that you just need to talk about the game as a whole. Once again, it's a horror game. It's going to scare some people and it's not going to scare others depending on what they happen to be afraid of. If you're sort of more into that old psychological, deeply uh, disturbing kind of um, horror game as opposed to the kind where you're being chased by a monster, uh, you'll really like Amnesia A Machine for Pigs. And I keep comparing it to Silent Hill 2 because it is, in a lot of ways, very reminiscent of Silent Hill 2, which I think is a good thing. And um, I, I think that uh, that style of horror suits me best. If you're the sort of person who really likes um, a bit of action, if you're most tense when you've got that adrenaline rush from a jump scare and you're running away from something, then you're going to want to look elsewhere. Um, if you're the sort of person who liked Bioshock Infinite, or liked my uh, Bioshock Infinite playthrough, you might like this. There's a lot of ties between the two in terms of what they focus on and what the game is sort of about. Um, both, of the, both of these games focus primarily on the characters as opposed to anything else. And um, I, I think that that sort of 
again, something that not enough games do is they focus on like making it so that the character is this complete shrub and uh, then you're assumed to fill in the blanks and they don't write an actual character. Um, I, I think that games like this where you have to play them as a specific character, I think those are becoming too rare, even though obviously there's still a couple kicking around. It's just that they get thoroughly criticized for it, which I, th I think is bad. I, I don't like that uh, sort of criticism because, well, people don't make enough of those games as is. Uh, and so basically, if you like this sort of game, make sure to give it a go. If you liked my review of it, so there are some other reviews, some very um, limited number that I've done. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you all next time.